Hello and welcome to ERPM Notelog and today I will be teaching you about fractures. A fracture is a partial or a complete break in the anatomical continuity of the bone cortex. It should be differentiated from an osteotomy in which there is an intentional breakage of a bone during surgery. While classifying fractures, they can be classified in many ways. The clinical classification consists of open fractures and closed fractures. In an open fracture, the fracture or its hematoma both communicate with the external environment through a wound. It is also known as a compound fracture. Open fractures commonly occur in the tibia. Closed fractures occur when a fracture or a hematoma does not communicate with the external environment. Radiological classification. This is based on the mechanism of injury. So the first type is transverse fractures. In a transverse fracture, the fracture line is perpendicular to the long axis of the bone. This occurs due to a tapping or bending force. So it will look like this. And this is the long axis of the bone. Oblique fractures They occur when a bending force plus a component along the long axis of the bone breaks the bone. It looks like this. Then the third type is spiral fractures. This is when the fracture line runs spirally in more than one plane. I will draw and show. So see according to this diagram, there are two planes. This is the first plane and this is the other plane. So the fracture line runs in more than one plane. Then the fourth type is comminuted fractures. This occurs due to a crushing or a compression force along the long axis of the bone. This type of fractures have more than two fragments. Then the fifth type is segmental fractures. This occurs when there are two fractures in the same bone at two different levels. So there are two fractures, one over here and the one over here. And the sixth type is avulsion fractures. This happens when a muscle suddenly contracts with force and leads to the evulsion of muscle or ligament from its bony attachment. For example, the patella tendon with the lower pole of patella. So this is the femur and this is the tibia. This is the patella. Right? 
access the card reserves muscle. And the fracture will occur like this when the muscle gets pulled upwards. Then fractures are further classified based on etiology. Traumatic fractures occur due to trauma. They usually have a predictable and a successful outcome. For example, road traffic accident, falls, etc. Pathological fractures. Pathological fracture is a fracture of a bone that has been weakened by disease. This can occur due to minimal or no force and pathological fractures often go into non-union. For example, fracture of a bone weakened by metastasis, pre-existing infections, tumors like osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, multiple myeloma, osteoporosis, etc. In the third type is stress fractures. These are special fractures that occur due to chronic repetitive injury that can cause complete or incomplete fractures in an otherwise normal bone. It may present with pain as the only symptom and may not be present in x-rays. The common sites of stress fracture are the metatarsal and the lower third of the fibula. When the metatarsal gets fractured, it is known as March fracture. It is the fracture of the second metatarsal neck, which is seen in new recruits after long marches. It can also occur in the third metatarsal. When the fracture occurs in the lower third of the fibula, it is known as runner's fracture. Fractures are further classified based on the extent. Complete fractures is when the fracture line involves both cortices of the bone. Incomplete fractures occur when the fracture line does not reach the other cortex. There are two types of incomplete fractures. The first type is green stick fracture. These occur in children because their bones are soft. This is how a green streak fracture looks like. As you can see, it is not complete. The second type of incomplete fracture is torus fracture. Even this type of fracture occurs in children, where one or both cortices get buckled due to a vertical compression, but it does not get displaced. This commonly occurs in the distal radius. It will get buckled at both cortices due to a vertical compression. Now I will explain the clinical features of a fracture. When we take history from a patient with a fracture, there are certain things that we have to ask. We should ask for any history of trauma. How that trauma happened? Is there a swelling? Is there a deformity? Is there a pain? 
Does the limb function as it did before the trauma incident? Then, on examination, there are things that we should look out for. For example, on inspection, we should look at the color of the limb. We should look if there are any deformities, if there is a swelling, if there is echimosis. Echimosis is the discoloration of the skin due to bleeding underneath. Also, we should look for any shortening of the limb. On palpation, we should palpate for any bony tenderness, bony crepitus, which is like a dry crackling sound or feeling. Lots of transmitted movements. When we move one part of the limb, the other part also should move. But if it does not happen, then it points out to fracture. And check if there is any other abnormal movements at the fracture site. Active movements is when uh, the patient moves the limb. Or when passive movements is when the doctor moves the limb. He should also check for the neurovascular status. There are five P's which we should check for. Pallor, pain, pulselessness, paralysis, and paresthesia. Now, I will explain about the management of a person with fracture. So management consists of investigation and treatment. The most commonly done investigation for fractures is X-ray. To confirm that a fracture has occurred, a minimum of two X-rays are required. It should include both the joint above and the joint below the fracture. In children, both sides should be compared because immature epiphysis can confuse the exam. If an injury to the bone is suspected even after treatment, do a repeat x-ray. For example, fracture of the scaphoid. The second mode of investigation is a non-contrast CT scan. This is done for intra-articular fractures or fractures in areas with complex anatomy. For example, the intercondylar region of the elbow, proximal humerus, and proximal scapula. An undisplaced fracture that is missed on a plain x-ray can be detected by a CT scan. Treatment of a fracture. On admission, make sure that the patient has a comfortable bed and follow the ATLS protocol which is airway, breathing, and circulation. Insert a white bow cannula and draw blood for urgent D-dimer and ABG. D-dimer is done to check if there are any blood clots. Manage blood loss or shock by direct mechanical pressure. Replace the fluid loss as needed. Immobilize the limb with a splint. Splints are faster and easier to apply. This allows space for natural swelling during the acute phase of the injury and it can be easily removed when the fracture site requires inspection. Check for limb circulation and the distal neurological status. Check for compartment syndrome. This is very important and I will be explaining it in another video. Give analgesics for pain management according to the pain ladder. Clean the wound thoroughly with normal saline after removing any visible foreign bodies.
Make sure you give profile axis for tetanus and gangrene. For tetanus profile axis, give a tetanus toxoid injection. And for gangrene profile axis, make sure that early and adequate wound debridement is done and leave the wound open. Fractures are prone for infection, so make sure that the patient is started on broad spectrum antibiotics to control any infection. Inform the general surgeon and the orthopedic surgeon and put the patient to the immediate theatre list for wound toilet. Simultaneously, other injuries in the chest, abdomen and other areas of the body should be checked for. Specific Fracture Treatment There are three steps, reduction, retention and rehabilitation. The three R's. Reduction is when the displaced ends of the fracture are brought back to its normal anatomical position. There are two types of reduction, open and closed. Open reduction is a surgical opening made at the fracture site and the ends of the fracture are aligned manually. Closed reduction the fracture site is not open. Traction and counter traction are applied over the distal and the proximal ends of the fractured bones with specific manipulation and the fracture is brought back to its anatomical position. For example, fracture of the neck of femur. In some cases, manipulation is done under general anesthesia. This is called manipulation under anesthesia or MUA. For example, in adhesive capsulitis. Retention. After the fracture is aligned correctly, the bone is retained in its anatomical position using various methods until the fracture heals. There are two ways of retention. Retention by internal fixation. It's done by close reduction or open reduction. For example, fracture of femur in an adult. For internal fixation, nails, plates and screws are used. The second method of retention is by external fixation. This can be done by using plaster of Paris. This is a form of close reduction. For example, this is done for collars fracture. External fixation can also be done by using an external fixator. This can be done either by using open or closed reduction. For example, open fractures. The third method of external fixation is by using traction. This is usually done for fracture of femur in children. This is also done in adults and if a weight of less than 5 kilos is required to fix, then skin traction can be used. If a weight greater than 5 kilos is required, then skeletal traction can be used. The third specific treatment, which is rehabilitation. This is done by giving physiotherapy to the patient. By giving physiotherapy, the patient is brought back to his or her original functional level. There are certain indications for the surgical treatment of fractures. When fractures occur intra-articularly and are displaced, then they should be treated surgically. These fractures are the fracture of part of the bone that forms a joint. Pathological fractures also require surgical treatment. In fractures through the growth plate, a rest of growth can happen, so it has to be treated surgically. If there is established non-union or malunion, then that site has to be treated surgically. 
Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please like, comment and subscribe. If you want a type copy of these notes, please contact me. A preview is there in the description.